what is anything really without a little soul? Today we'll be digging deeper into our connections and discussing the impact of networking beyond leads with today's guest, singer-songwriter Andrea Vasquez and entrepreneur Ashley Owens. Oh. My name is Amanda Ashley and this is Afternoon Cocktail, episode 94, Soul Networking. Welcome. Hi, Andrea. Welcome to Afternoon Cocktail. How's it going today? Good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on today. Oh, it's such a pleasure. I love your music and your voice is phenomenal. Um, Thanks. What were you, you going to perform for us? Um, I guess I'm going to just start it off by playing the single, which is what we'll pretty much be talking about today. It's called Bed You Made. Oh, yeah. I love this one. Take it away. Okay, cool. Here we go. Once. Told me you were out just having fun I'm not that dumb I'm not that dumb Where the cheap perfumes don't come from No, you ain't fooling the neat one I'm not that dumb I'm not that dumb I see you blowing up your phone Bet you told me you not Think you can blow one on me? Oh, it don't mean anything. One day you're gonna see. Shouldn't it straight? Oh, sleep in the bed you made. Yeah, boy, you're really good. You got me thinking I was losing my mind the way you look around your package. Your fragile little weagle can have it. There's no more light in your lies. Go back your shit, I want what's mine. Think you can put one on me. You don't be. <laughs> Andrea, so where are you? Are you in Nashville currently, like at this moment? Yes, I am currently in Nashville. I've been here for the last three and a half years. Feels like two and, and a half because I feel like the last year did not happen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a weird year to be in Nashville. Oh my God. I feel mm -hmm. like, uh, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time out there. I have a good, very good friend. One of my best friends for life lives out there. Um, but yeah, this has been like a crazy year and a half. I feel like between like tornadoes and bombings and all <laughs> uh, the pandemic, needs a break. 
yeah like seriously I, i'm always like no stop <laughs> so andrew where you you're originally from la though right mm -hmm. born and raised in california i spent some time in northern virginia as a kid and yeah back to la as like an adult you know high school and on and then made my way to nashville finally how do you feel like does Nashville remind you of LA at all? Because some, in some ways, Nashville reminds me of like a country LA. Yes, no, it absolutely does, and it's kind of funny because I feel like most of my peers, a lot of my peers from college and stuff back from LA are out here now, and we're all kind of doing the thing. Um, but yeah, it does remind me of LA. There's so much awesome food and stuff coming to the city, so it's been cool to see it grow. Where did you go to college? Music, musicians Institute in LA. Awesome. Very cool. And like, what was your concentration? Music business and vocal performance. Very cool. So what's it like to, you know, I mean, be in the music business now, like it's one thing to study it. And then another thing to be like living, breathing it, you know, how does it differ to you? Um, I mean, it's awesome. It has its ups and downs, obviously, like anything, especially this year, but it's been cool to kind of see. I mean, something about me, number one, I'm very glad that I got to study a little bit uh, about kind of the very technical side of things. And I'm not going to bore you about that, but it is good to just kind of look out for yourself. And um, I feel like LA definitely made me have tough skin um because that's you know you've got to just know not to trust everybody you know just to kind of keep your um don't have your blinders on especially as a girl you know you got to just kind of fend for yourself but that being said um it's the industry is constantly growing and evolving and you got to learn not to compare because what can go right for this person may not go right for you vice versa so you just kind of kind of got to Pick your lane and stay in it and definitely just block out the noise. Definitely. Now, do you have, um, I mean, what's it like to go back to LA? I mean, we, I'm sure before the pandemic, were you going back and forth for performances a lot? Um, not really. I really, you know, most of my stuff is kind of just all here, um, mainly. There is a country scene out in LA, um, but it's nothing like Nashville, absolutely not. But um, I just go home to visit every now and then, but I haven't really been able to much since the pandemic. Is your, so did I read that you also come from a family of musicians or? Mm -hmm. So what, like, did you guys grow up singing together? Like, what was it? I, I didn't grow up in a musical family. So like, I'm always like, so interested to know like what it's like, you know, is, is it like the Brady Bunch where everybody's like singing around yeah. in the kitchen or, you know, or... No, no, no. My, my cousins and every, all of us are, they all kind of do stuff within the music industry. Like I have a cousin I look up to that sings and, you know, we've have drummers and bassists and, you know, everything. And my cousins have a really cool recording studio in the house. So everyone's very creative and everybody kind of always worked in the industry, whether it's lighting or production or tour managing, et cetera, it's a publicist. Um, so it was cool kind of being around that because I think that also teaches you like, oh, wow, you can actually really do this as a job job. Yeah, that's awesome. What an awesome like team of people to to be brought up with, you know, like to know no kidding. And those it, roles are important, <laughs> very important. Yeah. And we all, you know, um, especially when we were a little younger, like you always use each other for like, I'll do your photos if you do this or this and that. So and you're always learning, you know, it's, free advice from your family. Yeah, seriously, that is so fortunate. Good for you. That's I'm jealous. What <laughs> what type of music inspired your journey and influences? Like what what are you jamming out to these days? And what was like, what's an artist of the past that that just forever holds a piece of your heart? Um, that's the thing I listen to every sort of genre. I don't only just listen to country. I think I would drive myself crazy if I only listened to one genre. Um, that being said, I have a, such a big place in my heart for Carrie. Carrie Underwood, I feel like paved the way for my generation and my music definitely, I feel like reflects some of that in a way, oh, like yeah. the big production kind of stuff. I love people like her. I love Marin Morris, who adds a lot of pop in her um, elements to pop elements in her music. And she's very outspoken. I feel like if you follow me on social media, you know, I definitely like to speak out about 
things going on in the world, whether if it's a, a popular opinion or not, you know. Um, and yeah, I think that so many people like Marin have just kind of just paved a really cool way and countries just growing and evolving so much. I love I, well, all those people that you mentioned, I really love. Um, but Mary Morris, I, I just recently like jumped on her bandwagon and I'm obsessed with her. Like I only know, I, to be honest, like I listen to like a lot of like Dua Lipa like type of music. Like that's like my go-to when I feel like jamming out. She's um, amazing. But I love her, like I'm obsessed with her. But anyway, like I listen to everything, you know, like, and and especially like I, I'm listening to all my artists, you know, that I'm inviting on this show that I've been fortunate to have, and it's all different types of music. Um, but yeah, Mary Morris, uh, she's great. I love her. I love her poppy songs and her country stuff is good. I didn't know she sang my church. Like I always thought for some reason that was not her. <laughs> yeah. But that's like a, a huge song. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, she's great. Really great. Um, when did you, I mean, so what was the moment that you, were, you knew you wanted to be a musician? Um, I mean, it sounds so cliche and I feel like always, it probably wasn't till high school, you know, when you, all your friends are kind of applying places. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I don't think I see myself as being like a teacher or a doctor or whatever, you know, I just didn't have that in me. I was like, I want to do music. I know it sounds silly, but my parents have always been so supportive and awesome. So that was never not a possibility for me. So I'm definitely lucky. That's cool. You know, it, it's interesting because then there's some like, I, I wonder, if, I mean, there are some musician parents that like try to discourage their kids from going down that path because of you know, the darker side of, of music. So that's, it's great that you had that support and then all those awesome resources. I love that you guys helped each other out. I think that's, that's important with anybody, right? It's, it's important. You have your own network built in your family. Yeah. It's freaking great. I want to talk yeah. about soul networking. I mean, you can't network more from the soul than, than with the people you love, you know? Totally, so. totally. So definitely lucky on that aspect but yeah no my parents have been awesome yeah great how has your music evolved from your previous releases like your your current music um i don't know i feel like with every release you i feel like um i definitely work with similar people still because i feel like once you really trust your people um it's scary to branch out sometimes but i feel like especially with my content before I was younger and, you know, I wasn't really sure of like, you know, you get so in your head about, are they gonna like this? Or are you gonna like that? I mean, I feel like I'm just at the point where I'm like, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. And you just gotta trust what you're putting out there and kind of just, it just feels more organic and more like me. Good. Now the people that, uh, the musicians on your recordings, is that, do you have a band that you play out with or tour with? Um, that's playing on that on those recordings or is it just like hired musicians um i have on those recordings that i put out it's usually just hired musicians you know studio players i have like my handful of ones that we contact but um yeah but i do have my own players um of course right now during covid you know everybody's kind of doing their own thing but it's usually the same kind of group of dudes especially with guitar players i really trust my guitar players so I have a couple that I contact because, you know, they're not always available. They're always at other gigs, too. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well, being in Nashville, you sure have <laughs> a good yeah, and, and being a an excellent people. artist. Yeah, I'm sure you have plenty of people to uh, to find. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So you, you were saying that you you tend to be a little bit more outspoken on your social media. What is it that what awareness are you most passionate about bringing forward to the public? I mean, country music does not have a lot of diversity. I think that's very clear. And I'm obviously Hispanic and that's not common in this in genre. So I think it's just being aware of that and giving everybody a chance and just, you know, cause some people definitely don't like to hear things that are not in their norm. I mean, that's just the reality of it. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I mean, because you see, you're starting to see a little bit more, a little more color in country, right? Sure. We have like, oh, yeah. Guyton, it, definitely. you know, Kane Brown. Um, but yeah, it's still so predominantly white. And you're right. Like when you, when I think about it, I don't think I know any like Spanish or like Latin country singers. I can't think of mm -hmm. one. That's crazy. Yeah, but, it is. So I mean, trying to kind of bring awareness to things like that and you know the world's just been in a crazy spot those last couple months so have in your experience you really like experienced kind of being turned away from because of having a hispanic background um yeah and no i mean also being a girl in general like radio finding radio play as a girl in for one is almost impossible sometimes um being a new person and all of that but i don't know i've i i really just i don't care if they have a problem with it if that's me and someone else is going to like it yeah definitely so what is one valuable lesson like out of from 2020 it's taught us like a, a trillion things right what's one yeah. valuable lesson that has <clears throat> really been brought to your attention um it sounds so cheesy but really just be thankful i mean i have um i feel like all of us I, it was kind of I, okay i don't know word this it wasn't nice that everything was shut down but everybody is going through the same exact unknowns mm -hmm. so and it's good to kind of just remind yourself that everybody's kind of figuring all of this out together and on top of that too not taking things for granted and just being true to yourself because i think that with quarantine we had to halt a lot of production. We had to halt a lot of things and you just had to rely on yourself and maybe the people in your house that can help you create content and, you know, just be unapologetic about it. Yeah, definitely. I think I, patience seems yeah. like a big theme for this year. And, you know, like how we all have to learn to be a little bit more patient with each other, you know, especially given the circumstances, like you're saying, something that we're all going through and every, you know, we all handle these things differently, you know, so it's kind of being there for the people you love and, and supporting one another in all those small ways that makes it a, a huge difference. Totally. Oh, it absolutely does. And I mean, trying not to compare too, because you just don't know what that other person has done or to get to this point or, you know what I mean? It's kind of perceptions reality too, you know, I, it, it, yeah, you just can't compare, especially with social media. And that's something I've tried to really do away with this year. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was an intense year. <laughs> I mean, no I really, kidding. Like, <laughs> that's a word. Seriously. I mean, like, it's just, there's just so, so much all at once, you know, and everybody's reacting and people have more time and they're at home or, you know, so like, it's just like a, a terrible combination of things like, yeah. like God thought about, hey, let me put together the worst combination of things Boom. and like toss this ball out and see how uh, how many see people how catch it. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so today's theme is soul networking. As an artist, making connections in business is all a part of the game, and making the connection with your listeners is is truly everything. So, in what ways? Are you making an effort to connect with your followers on a more personal level? And uh, why do you feel making that connection is important? I think especially this, this stage in the game is really important to get those followers like attention. Like I can look back at artists that I admired in the past and when they're at like that almost breaking point, it they, I feel like that's when the, your fans are so important because I want to see like what's going on. Um, I definitely try to respond to as many matches, messages as I can and be more engaging. And that's another thing with content. I definitely like to, <clears throat> my posts are maybe a little more serious, but my stories I feel are a little bit more my personality. Like I love to laugh. I love to just be a goofball sometimes. So showing a little bit of that personality because those people want to know you too. They don't want to just see the filtered photo that you post every three days, you know? So yeah. kind of things like that and leave things open ended where people can respond and, you know, check in with people. Um, Cause ultimately it's, you know, fans and followers that are going to get you there. So I did a really cool thing. Um, 
a night the night before the bed you made release i did like a little zoom call with some people that engage on my post the most and um, a lot of them were really young girls and they were so fun to talk to and we did like a zoom like we are right now and just hung out like asked them about what's going on in their lives and then they got to hear the song and i don't know it's just cool to do more things to make everybody feel part- like they're participating and then i also feel like the lives are they were first we were maybe like this is so annoying i want to play a show but it's also kind of cool that you could see a show the show from your living room even if you you know being across the country because maybe they would have never seen you play live if this pandemic couldn't have happened does that make sense oh yeah i think that's the best part i mean for musicians like for those that took advantage of doing that like i think that's the most valuable thing like get into know the show you know like i i look at this as an opportunity to get to know people beyond the amazing things they're doing as human beings you know and at the core of this when we're all experiencing like a pretty traumatic event, you know, where we're shut down and unsure and uncertain about so many things, you know, the one positive is for those that now, like I have access to, to the people that I admire, you know, where I might have not had access before, you know, and I think that's, that's think healthy it was a thing too, you know, so yeah. that is kind of cool how it's kind of changed, you know, if there's anything we can take away from that, it's like, you're connecting with people that you would have never met in person. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's I think it's awesome. Um, so too. Andrew, tell us more about the bed you made. Like, when could we could we download that? Where could we listen to more of your music? Yeah, so you? bed you made made its release on CMT or its debut for the video on CMT a couple weeks ago, and that was really exciting. Um, if you follow me at Drea Vasquez, D R E A V A S Q U E Z um on instagram or twitter you can get to my spotify through there that's probably the easiest and you could listen to it on every i would say it's spotify but you can listen to it on all streaming platforms so just andrea vasquez and bed you made i love it good luck andrea and um Thank you. yeah i look forward to hearing more fantastic Thanks. we're gonna hear one more song from andrea towards the end of our program in the meantime I have the pleasure of introducing guest entrepreneur, Ashley Owens. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. Oh, thank you so much for being had. It's awesome to have you. Uh, Ashley, I love that you're a fast talker and like New Jersey girl at heart forever. <laughs> the problem for most, but I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I do. It's actually very endearing. I'm from Long Island, so like some, not that they're the same, but- They're it's, very damn close. They're pretty, to, they're pretty yeah. close very close so it's it's always fun for me to come across people like you who have brilliant things to say so <laughs> um could you're welcome can you tell our audience to share a little bit about who you are your background and the journey that inspired your business ashley assist sure so my job is i'm a networking concierge so what that means is, is that i educate train and work with and coach individuals and sales teams how to network effectively. Um, Before the pandemic, um, I was doing a lot of the tangible and tactical activities to build a network. So I was offering services like going to events with my clients as an extension of them at those events. So I was like a professional wing woman without the sexy time. Like I wasn't dating (laughs) the client. (laughs) It was more of being that extra person and being that go-to person there and also being um, able to advocate for them when they were not in the room. So my biggest, you know, experience with that grew when I ended up going to conferences as well. So I would get hired to do events with clients. I would train them and coach them how to exit a conversation you don't want to be into to just finding the right people in the room body language the whole nine and then it came down to the organization part of it so for me the difference between networking and making a friendship is in the follow-up what kind of follow-up are you doing and being able to navigate and nurture that network tactically and tangibly with a human component to it because Networking is a human activity. It's not a sales activity. So the goal was to educate my client, help them, handhold them in the process. And then when the pandemic hit, a lot of my business went from being on site to everything online. So I was still training clients about how to network online, but just online and on site. And then I took two weeks during the pandemic and I looked at to see what the feel was. 
How are people reacting to other people? How are they communicating? And then I tested a bunch of things for about three weeks and then put it into practice and then educate people on the best ways to network virtually. Um, how I got started was I had 18 jobs after graduation. So I never got fired though. It was all mergers <laughs> and acquisitions and budget cuts. And you guys are, Good you work. know, right. I know you're just, you know, <laughs> getting jobs here and there. But I I was a I worked at entertainment. I was a personal assistant to two celebrities in New York. And I was an actor. So you guys are singers. I was an actor a long, long, long time ago. Um or excuse me, artists, way more than just singers. Um, so <laughs> the the hustle is real. It really is. And so when I got to Philadelphia, I ended up getting this position. Um, I ended up creating this position because I was very tired of having somebody else to pick my future. And after 18 years or what I felt like a million years of really trying to make it and follow the rules and work in corporate and work for small businesses and work for nonprofits and work for individuals, I was doing well and I was still just a number. So I'd work through every sick day, every you know bad day, and I would never take vacation. And I felt like my voice was just not being heard whatsoever. So when I started the position, it was with no business degree and literally everything to prove, which was to prove to myself that I could build something. And it changed over time based off of the needs of my client. I love that. I think um, I think some of the best business people that I, I've met or known really weren't formally educated in business. They just kind of learned by by doing, by doing and by like being self-taught and surrounding themselves with the people they they admired, you know? That was networking. The thing. Right. But but I also didn't know what networking was. I just did it just to save my butt when I was working with <laughs> those celebrities, right? Like because you would so that's really where I, I learned how, how to really nurture a network was based off of the fact that when I knew how to get a job because I would ask for the favors after putting in five years worth of favors for them, you know? So the, the, the challenge was who do I reach out to? And if my Irish Catholic blood wouldn't boil over if I asked for help, you know? So it just became one of those things where I finally was able to start trusting people to help me. And when I did, the world just opened up. Yeah. And I think like taking your career into your hands, like you said, like you, if there comes a point where you you feel like you're dedicating all your, your time, all your life into this one thing and, and it's just not helping you, you know, like, you know, you could do it just as well or better, you know, on your own. I, that's awesome. It's brave to take, it takes a lot of courage to take that, that jump. But um, if it works out, it's, it's worth it. Right. Honestly, my motivator was just getting pissed off enough. Like it took so long of being like proverbially punched in the face and being like, <laughs> okay, enough's enough. When, I'm, when is it my turn? And, you know, to your point there, there is, it, it came about as in, I wish I could give more advice on this, but I, I, I generated this business based off of the needs of the people that I cared about. So my network was growing when I was working in tech and I was in sales. And I sucked at closing. I was just a bad closer. I just, I don't like asking people for money. That's also how I was raised. So it just became a very, very, very challenging activity. And so when I put this business together, it came off of the needs of the people that I had cared about. So now my drivers, my inhibitions, my passions came from wanting to help them. How do I do that tactically, tangibly, and being able to monetize it? And let me tell you that first check when someone said, I value what you're saying was the best thing that ever happened because I was for so long had to ask for somebody's permission to do anything in mm -hmm. any business. So that was incredibly empowering. Yeah, I believe it. That sounds awesome. So, I mean, you said you worked 18 jobs before this, right? So do you feel like those 18 jobs, like what, in what way do you feel like it's lended itself to where you are today? Um, so I can what, get a lot more done a lot faster now because <laughs> <laughs> I was in all those positions, but great question. So those, I finally was able to figure out why that was even a value add. I mm -hmm. was able to talk intelligently to different industries, which allowed me to network better and also allowed me to make better connections. So I didn't realize my entire adult career was literally preparing me for this one position. So yeah. I don't regret anything. I, I'm mad that I felt as 
non-confident as I should have been for the last few years. And it's only until I started this business that I actually heard my own voice. So no regrets, but I learned a lot. And I also learned how to manage people better. Um, even when I was a waitress, my, I loved being a waitress because my ability to understand and how to navigate different personalities quicker was like, it worked like a muscle. And so getting into the corporate world, you just dealt with the jabroni that is an idiot that wants, you know, another iced tea for the 14th time, right? Like you just turn on that kind of part of your brain. I definitely, I feel like everybody at one point in their life should work a waitressing bartending job just for like a week (laughs) because it really, like, I I was thinking about this, like when I was writing for the show today, you know, like I, I had no, I never went to school for business. I, Mm -hmm. for me to become a self-made musician, like a professional musician, I had to take risks and really put myself out there, do a lot of free work you know, um, but, and, and just be persistent and consistent throughout the years. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much. And the only reason why I ever drove myself to do that was because I just love music so much and I didn't want to do anything else. I was tired of waitressing and dealing with all those different personalities, you know, like I was just ready for the next phase of life. And, um, but all those years that I spent doing those things, You know, like, I feel like I owe a lot of who I am because of working at Carabas for like three years, you know, and (laughs) Jersey diner. Yeah, I get it. (laughs) Yeah. You know, like there's so much to learn in just, um, dealing with public service, you know, any type of public service you're dealing with multiple personalities and difficult personalities on top of. Uh, I mean, in your clientele, on top of the people that you work with, too, you know. <laughs> but it also it's, helps you uh, figure out what you don't want to tolerate either, right? There are certain yeah. personalities you can navigate, and you can figure out how to troubleshoot, and then you figure out where the hell your boundaries are, yeah. right? And so that is even the the best gift you could you could receive is figuring out as a woman where the hell your boundaries are, because we're always <laughs> going to say yes to everything, and then you know have to fight to defend the decisions that we make. That's a constant struggle. Yeah. Oh, for real. Definitely. So I love that you're saying, um, you know, that networking is what you say it again. You said it's a human. Yeah. It's yeah. It's a human Uh, thing. It's a, it's a human activity. So it's a human. So networking is a, it's not a sales activity. It's it's a human to human activity. So the, you know, or it could also be described as a marketing opportunity. Um, people forget that like networking feels so it feels so salesy and it feels so forced but Mm -hmm. literally what you're doing is communicating with another human being and the only difference between building a friendship and building a professional relationship is in the follow-up how are you following up and how are you giving value when you network it's being of service to someone else nobody Mm -hmm. also cares about what you do nobody cares nobody cares (laughs) don't care I care about you. I want to buy from you. I had no like and trust you. Can you have a drink with me? Like, can we do that? If we can't, then I want nothing to do with you. Or again, if you're sober, cool. We'll have a, we'll have some tea or some coffee. We can add some other vices to it. But like, think about all the networking events and, uh, you know, uh, you, the two of you must have done a ton of this for entertainment wise. And I used to go to events with my client all the time. You're schmoozing. And that schmoozing becomes the surface relationship that you have with other people. What I really challenge my clients to do is like, don't give a damn about what anybody else does. Because the minute you even think about who that person is, is the minute that you lose yourself and you don't make a good first impression. Or, or that you are not true to yourself. And once anybody gets a whiff of the fake version of you, then you have to keep that up. And that just feels so gross. And it also feels so inauthentic. And then you're fighting again for and defending how you're acting because it's not what they first saw. It's like dating. It's weird. I actually, I told that it's in my like closeout statement. It always like, I think about all the the breakfast and the luncheons I went to, or like when I had had a sales job, um, Mm -hmm. you know, like that I was signed up for all these networking events and some of it felt super slimy, you know, like, it's just, you know, the people that are there, they're just there because they're, they have to be. And 
they're trying to push a product and they'll, you know, or there's that. And then there's also the people that just like slip in your cards and that, that won't really hold up on their end. You know, like they're not doing their part to support you. So why should I support you if you're not supporting me? You know, it's just a greasy card. The lack of community and the lack of actual authentic networking, it was extraordinary before the pandemic. Now yeah. people aren't handing out cards. They're building communities on websites. They are bringing attention to their own audiences. They are building out intentional networking activity. Like there's a company called Hio that I work with and it's called Hit It Off. And what they're doing is they're building out a, a platform that builds onto your website that is foundationally around networking. And what you do is, is that you communicate with the other members of that group of that experience and that way you can communicate with them directly and they can share contact information but it lives on your site so that way you're yeah. not going to like you can go to the facebook and the instagrams and the linkedins but like it takes everybody directly to your site so the intention behind the connection is way more um it's, it's just way more thoughtful so yeah. like like there's to your point yeah every networking event felt slimy but guess what? Those, <laughs> those jabronis are not a part of these groups anymore. Yeah. They are like, I haven't seen them. So one of the, you know, even just the tips or things that, especially if anybody else is going through that feeling of being a part of a networking group, like join groups that make, that have mentorship programs, that have resources, that have programs, like virtual programs. If you just go to like a networking group, that's just a referral based, you're going to get the slimy people that are in there. But if you're building a community and a network that is there to work for you as much as you're there to work for them, it's a game changer in your business and, and how successful you are. I, yeah, it's, it's cool. The whole networking thing. I I've actually joined like on Facebook, there's, yeah. I was added to this one group that's for writers all over the world. And it's wow. like writing opportunities um, that people are submitting lots of interesting people, you know, and I'm, I'm grateful. Like, I don't know how I got invited to this group or why I was added, you know, but, um, it's inspiring, you know, and to, to find those, if you find the right community for you, mm -hmm. you know, like there's so much education, like right there in the palm of your hand, you know, that you could take somewhere. Um, so yeah, I think it's, I definitely noticed, I think that's been one of the positives also, you know, like we, Andrew and I, Andrea and I were talking about, um, you know, how they, you have more access to your fans and yeah. fans have more access to the artists, but in the, in the entrepreneur like world, I think these different groups and opportunities to, to network, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think you can network a little bit more effectively. There's an intention behind it. And sometimes yeah. with all of the options that we have out there between every social media platform, sometimes it can kind of get convoluted and lost. Um, but I think the other, not the issue, but sometimes people also forget, like when you're building a network, you're building an army, you're building a group, you're taking a group of your champions and, and it's becoming your army. So in yeah. an army, in order for them to fight with you, just like you're fighting for them, who are your soldiers? Who's your number two? Who's your general? Who's your sergeant, right? In, in this, you know, theoretical army. Um, but in order for you to lead that or even fight with them or have them even think about fighting for you, you got to fight for them tenfold before you can yeah. even ask them for that. So when you build this community or this network of people, um, the main goal is to have them advocate for you when you're not in the room, just like you would. So we can only manage 150 people into our, you know, into our, um, uh, into our network. So, right. So there, there's a, uh, Robin Dunbar's theory. Sorry, I'm in West Philly. It's very loud all the time. Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to live streaming. <laughs> yeah, um, right. Yeah, the, you know, there's only 150 people that we can actually maintain social interactions with, according to Robin, uh, Robin Dunbar's theory. And so, who are you filling those slots with? Every Joe, Dick, and Harry that jumps on a call with you, like who, who are you at? You can only manage that amount of people. So it just puts things into perspective. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was thinking, you know, we network all the time. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Every like with every interaction that you have, we're mm -hmm. networking, you know, and I think I think about this because like if I go to the gym, I see a lot of the same faces, you know, but I don't really know any of those people. But I think right. of like some of the connections I've made at the gym, just kind of saying just and it all starts with the hello, you yeah. know, it's just saying hello to somebody be, and acknowledging their presence because you whether you want to know each other or know each other, we're seeing each other, right. <laughs> you know, so hi, you know, that's it's not a bad thing to do. Right? right. And if that opens up the gateway to conversation, you're learning something new about somebody and that somebody is probably has a talent or, you know, knows somebody else, you know, like, I just think like, it's just this web of connections through each person we meet. Yeah. It's, it's valuable to just say hello. Sometimes you never, you never know whose life you're going to change. And I'll give you a story behind that. When I was a waitress, I was coming back from working as a celebrity personal assistant and that position didn't work out. So when I moved back home or I was living at home, I, I had to pay school loans because those were astronomical. And so I worked as a waitress in the interim as, as I was trying to find another job. And so it was at the worst part of my life, even though I was very happy working as a waitress. I enjoyed the work and, and I just, I, but I also felt like I did all these things and I, now I'm coming back home. Like, what am I, this is hard. Um, and I was at, I was working at the diner and a, and a group came over to one of my booths and I just started talking to them, you know, just kind of how we're talking right now, very casually. And just, they, you know, we're going around and they were very nice, very professional. They asked, all right, what kind of burger should we get? I'm like, you're looking a little sassy. Maybe you want the spicy one, you know, just <laughs> doing a bit because I'm trying to, you know, just enjoy my time with them there. Yeah. So I, I leave, I go bring back their food and at the end of the end of their meal. They're like, Hey, would you send us your resume? You know, we have something that we think you might be interested in. And I'm like, Thank you guys very much. Have a great day. Show it in a tip. Thanks. You know, thinking that they were just being kind and friendly and not really thinking that I had value at all, mm -hmm. blowing them off essentially. The next day, the owner of that company who was at my table came over to my boss and said, can you grab Ashley? So they brought me over and he goes, Hey, we never received your resume. And so the next day I was like, Oh, okay. So I sent them over my resume went over and had the interview. Now they had only seen me as a, as waitress Ashley. They didn't see me as New York Ashley who had the fitted suit, who had the, the briefcase, who had like done up, like knew how to switch it on and off. And so I went in for the interview and they were blown away by one, how I looked. And two, they had no idea I had all this experience. And within 20 minutes, I had a 401k salary and benefits. Oh my goodness. And it was, I'm getting teary thinking, thinking about it because it was one of those moments where at my lowest, being myself was enough. And mm -hmm. I had never thought that that was ever an option. In my entire, throughout my entire career up until that point, I never thought that that was an option because I had to play the game. We know we're in entertainment. We got to play the game at some point. We're women in entertainment. We play the game. Yeah. So the that was working very heavily against me at the time. And these guys plucked me from being a waitress threw me into a sales position, trained me a little, but really let me go and just be me, like never reeled me back in, just let me go. And I was for an online e-commerce furniture company. And I was there for eight months until I moved to Philadelphia, but those guys changed my life significantly. They gave me a solidified position to know that I was enough. And I never had a manager or a company like that since then. And when I started my business, I knew that if I was going to put all of my heart and my energy into this baby, that is my business, I was going to do everything I possibly could to feel like I had given the ounce of what they had given me by helping people, whether it was a resource, a tool, an introduction. I have this itch and this need to feel like I have to give back because I have no idea whose life I could potentially change by sparking an idea or giving them an opportunity or making an introduction. And that changed my life forever. And so now that I live off of that one, um, it could be a therapy thing I probably need, but it's probably, <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those you know, moments where like you never forget the people that really believed in you. And that was when I didn't believe in myself. So my, my, my business acumen is very much, I'm there to give a voice 
to my clients when they don't have one, which is talking about their business and what they're passionate about and being able to help them with the resources. Um, since then, I have had the, the privilege and the pleasure of being able to host two television talk shows. I was on the Mel Robbins show and I have given over a thousand introductions and I just saw something pop up on my time hop the other day, a timeline the other day. And I knew that I had done the right thing based off of this. Um, I'm actually going to read it to you because it's, it, it, it changed my life that day as well, because you know, when you're, when you're an entrepreneur, you're trying to figure out the things that you want to do. Like you're also trying to figure out if anything that you're is sticking or if it makes sense to anyone. Yeah. And you hope that you can, you can provide value because at the time I was very, very self-conscious and hoping that I was giving back the way that those guys did. And so I had a presentation I did and this woman came up to me afterwards and she goes, uh, very nice, but you could see that she was very, um, sad behind the eyes um, and there was something that she had to, to say. And so I noticed it because we have all had that moment where we're just sad behind the eyes and it mm -hmm. takes one to know one at that point. So I pulled her aside. I'm like, tell me everything. What's going on? And she goes, I don't know, um, what to do about X, Y, and Z. I'm trying to start this business. And I just basically gassed her up and said, what's the worst that can happen? A year later, I get this message on my LinkedIn and she goes, hi, Ashley. We met at this event about seven weeks ago, uh, about a year ago, not seven weeks. Uh, after your presentation, I asked how you knew it was time to start your own business. Amongst other supportive dialogue, you asked me what I had to lose in rebranding myself and creating my own path. Well, here's positive feedback. Thank you. I have since started my own business and I'm working on becoming a certified caregiver, consultant, educator, and facilitator. With those three certifications, I can provide support, education, and advocacy for my family caregiver. Thank you so much. I will ex attend one of your events in October. You changed everything. Like, oh my God, that's amazing. You should like, like print that and frame it. <laughs> it's it's getting reshared on every single platform and I'm crying that's every beautiful. time. I read it. But that's like, beautiful. those are the most moments and like to your point and that's why I tell this story is because these guys changed my life by just seeing value this woman has been able to give me back a year's worth of humble and and help me keep going so that's what networking is 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 that's the the main thing that comes with it so that's that's what I help train my clients on if that's not networking from a soul I don't know what is but I think it's, oh, good. it's true <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, no, good job. Great job. I, you know, I think about this because, you know, sometimes we, we see things in other people that they don't see in themselves. You know, I, I, I my students, I feel this like, especially my one student, um, we're actually like working on something together. And she's, I just see the world in this girl's hands. And she doesn't yeah, and she's young, you know, so like, I want to guide her like I feel like compelled to like I want to make sure that she is guided in the right direction I want to take care of her you know and that network from the soul like to me like that connection that I feel with her you know um and that I feel with a lot of people that mean something to me those are the people I want to promote those are the people I want to you know be happy for in life and um when we take care of others, they typically take care of you, you know, and to me, there's no better way to network than just by taking care of each other. Right. And that's, that's it. That's it. And people put so much pressure on the networking piece. That's it. Exactly yeah. what you said. And that can be subjective. How you give value can be subjective. It can be really helping somebody out financially. It could be really helping somebody out brainstorming resource introduction, thought, anything. Yeah. It doesn't have to be so, so materialistic. And that's what people think of sometimes. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, um, some of the, the, the coolest people I've ever met was I hosted an open mic for eight years. Bo and I both did, you know, and nice. that's like the start of, that's what made us like really good friends at heart, at, at heart before anything else, you know, and, um, we just met so many amazing people and all of our careers were growing. You know, like I think of like the friends, not only the friends we made, but we watched like bands come together. We watched them, go, you know, form and then go tour, release albums, you know, like it's just it's really 
awesome. And then at the end, you know, like I've made the best, the most amazing friends, you yeah. know, that come and support me at my shows or, you know, like that support me even from afar. And I know they got my back for life, yeah. you know? So it's just, it's those connections are everything, you know? And sometimes it's just like in the, the daily things you do, like, you know, like what yeah. I was saying, like going to the gym, but like, I mean, I go to the post office and there's this girl that's been there for like the past eight years and we know each other, you know, mm -hmm. like, unless I have to be best friends with them and I, maybe we'll do no, nothing for each other on a business level, but our transaction, you know, if I give her a, a positive transaction every time, you know, at least maybe I'm bringing some good into her day. Yeah. You know, and that's the other thing that we could do for each other is just bring a little good into each other's lives, whether it's not about sales leads, you know, it's not really about anything else. It's just putting some good out there. hundred mm percent. -hmm. I could not agree more. Ashley, you're awesome. I wish I could talk to you like forever. Okay. Um, <laughs> so let's do this again sometime. And <laughs> best wishes to you um where can our audience what where can our audience learn more about you and seek your services absolutely so i have a couple things so you can find me at ashley at ashleyassist.com is my email ashleyassist dot with an s at the end ashleyassists.com uh, uh, is my website i am so i had talked about that Hyo social widget that that is building community we're actually in the process of looking for beta testers so all of that can be found on HiOSocial.com. Um, I'd be I'm doing a, a, a group demo on the 24th of March. So I'll be happy to send that out to anybody that is interested. It's free to join. And there's an affiliate program. So if you want to make some extra cash, build a community on your website, it's the best way to do it. Um, but I also coach individuals and sales teams. So the best way to work with me, literally just message me and we'll jump on a call and it'll be great. We'll have a cocktail, <laughs> maybe some coffee, you know shoot shoot the breeze i'm not sure if i can curse on this podcast but yeah you know just talk and, and jam about whatever and i think that if we bring cool people together cool stuff happens so that's what i hope to do hope to do for my clients i love it well cheers to you ashley thank you so much thank you. <laughs> pleasure again to know you yeah you andrea you want to close this out with one yeah absolutely and actually that was so fascinating yes Good stuff. I'm so glad you liked it. I'm so, this is so much fun. Just listening to everybody and then also getting a show. This is, a, this is so great. Yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> when you called me, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're sucked in. <laughs> so, yeah, again, thank you so much for having the both of us on here. This has been so awesome. Oh, um, totally. Yeah, My so pleasure. the next move for me is I'm currently recording more music. And I was going to play a song that's already out there, but if you guys go follow me, you can hear plenty of that. So I'll just play something that we're kind of working on right now. Yay. Um, hopefully get you excited for more music when we turn this volume up. So this one is called Version of You.
Beautiful, Andre. I love it. Thanks. Best wishes to you. Thank you so much again for being on our show. And huge thank you to Ashley Owens as well. Today's thank theme. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you so much. you're welcome. Thank you guys, really. So today's theme was social, uh, soul networking. 2020 was the year that pulled into focus how truly meaningful our connections are to our well being. Starved of interaction, we've turned to our social media platforms for comfort validation, and as a means to grow, survive, and establish new business. Ask any professional and they will tell you that networking is essential for one to succeed in business. And it is. Having a background in sales, networking events always felt, you know, like I was talking with Ashley, just a little bit slimy. You know, it was like being single and on the prowl. You're seeking to attract the attention of someone who is interesting, educated, like-minded, fun to talk to, reliable, trustworthy, and successful. When I think about it, the people that I want to know and who I want in my circle, they're always the, one that, they're always the ones that project the most sincerity and whose values were in line with mine. Effective networking is establishing many partnerships that encourage growth and support for the supply and demand of both parties. The role we each play in basic consumerism is what grows our connections and when it impacts one another's lives in all the smallest of ways. A very good friend and business colleague of mine taught me almost everything I know about networking from the soul, or at least made me realize it. Shout out to Steve Miller. <laughs> Steve, he's a man who lives his best life networking. He's spiritual, he's fun, he's giving, he's reliable, he's intelligent, he's hardworking. He's also extremely crass, wild, and unapologetic. What you see is what you get. And he's truly authentic in every sense. If there's anything I'm certain of, it's that Steve will always have the back of those he admires and respects and the best interest of his clients and colleagues in mind. His business sense I admire and his friendship I truly cherish. cherish. Steve taught me that there are networking opportunities in literally everything that we do. We often encounter the same people at the establishments and businesses we frequent in order for our basic everyday needs to be met, from the salon tax we get our hair cut at, to the tellers we cash out checks with, the sales associates and cashiers at the places we shop, the servers, bartenders, baristas, and business owners at the establishments we eat, drink, and play at, the doctors we see, the mechanics that work on our cars, the plumbers, painters, electricians, and private contractors we allow into our homes, etc. Every day we are connecting with people who are both new and familiar. Acknowledgement and simple acts of courtesy through our interaction open the pathway for conversation, for, re for relationships to blossom, and for our networks to extend over time. Our positive and negative interactions have a rippling effect on how well we maintain our connections and how we transact now and into the future. Networking successfully simply begins with being a good human. As with anything in life, the energy you put forward is what you get in return. So practice good business karma by supporting others, by practicing what you preach, by being approachable, dependable, and by delivering what's expected with true heart and soul. We as humans thrive when we are valued for our unique experiences, talent, and expertise. Establishing a good rapport with the people who support and trust our ability is a result of a good, honest energy we pay forward. Live with intention, and may success carry you forward. I wish you guys all a fantastic weekend. We are on break, and we'll be gearing up for season five in the next two weeks. So please be patient. And in the meantime, we have 93 episodes you could <laughs> refer back to and watch. We've had such extraordinary guests. Please catch up on your inspiration and um, stay in touch. Thank you to Boya Productions. Shouty to James Farley of Northwestern Mutual and to Maiden Voyage Studios here in Fairport, New York. Big thank you to our show sponsors, Rochester Woman Online, Chris Sirianni at ITinsightsRock.com and also to Bridget Hogue at Empire Realty. We will see you back here soon. Have a great weekend. 
and you all be good to yourselves. See ya.